When you think of a .50 caliber machine gun, you probably imagine chaos, deafening noise and recoil that could knock you off balance. Now imagine one that fires with the control of a rifle. That's the cord, a Russian .50 caliber that doesn't just hit hard, it hits exactly where it's aimed. Today we'll look at how this beast manages to be both a powerhouse and a precision tool, and why it's unlike anything else in its class. Before we dive in, hit subscribe and comment below if you love learning how legendary weapons are built. The Cord story begins in the ruins of an empire. When the Soviet Union collapsed in 1991, Russia inherited most of its weapons, but not all its factories. One of the losses was the production of the NSV Utyos, the trusted Soviet 50 caliber machine gun. It had been a workhorse for decades, powerful enough to tear through vehicles and aircraft. But the NSV was built in Kazakhstan, and suddenly, that was a foreign country. Russia's military needed a replacement, fast. They couldn't rely on imports for something so crucial. So the engineers at the Degyarev plant in Kovrov were tasked with creating a new weapon entirely on Russian soil. However, they didn't want to just copy the NSV. They wanted to fix everything it did wrong, reduce recoil, improve precision, and simplify production. In short, they wanted a heavy machine gun that didn't just destroy targets, it hit them. Well, after nearly a decade of testing and refining, the cord emerged in the late 1990s. At first, soldiers weren't sure what to expect. It looked familiar. Large receiver, long barrel, thick ammunition belt, but it felt different. When it fired, it didn't kick violently like its predecessor. The recoil was strong but smooth. The muzzle barely rose. The first rounds landed close together as if fired from a rifle, not a machine gun. This wasn't the usual brute force weapon. It was something smarter. It was the Kovrov Degdyarev Large Caliber, or simply, Cord. Where the NSV roared, the Cord spoke with precision. Where others sprayed, it aimed. It marked the beginning of a new Russian philosophy. Control is power. At its heart, the Cord uses a gas-operated long-stroke piston system, the same principle behind the AK-47. When a round is fired, gas is siphoned from the barrel into a piston chamber. That gas pushes a piston backward, cycling the bolt carrier and chambering the next round. It's a proven system, simple and durable, but the cord introduced something revolutionary for its size, a rotating bolt. When the bolt moves forward, it rotates and locks into the chamber, creating a secure seal. This mechanism absorbs pressure evenly reducing mechanical strain and keeping the weapon aligned after every shot. Earlier Soviet guns relied on less stable locking systems that flexed under stress. The cord's bolt, by contrast, stayed true, and so did its aim. That tight lockup meant each round left the barrel under nearly identical conditions, minimizing shot-to-shot -shot variation. In a 12.7mm machine gun, that consistency changes everything. Even the firing cycle was smoother. As the bolt and piston moved, their mass was perfectly balanced, reducing vibration. Combined with improved springs and a precision machined receiver, the cord fired in a rhythm that felt almost mechanical in its calmness. Recoil has always been the price of power. The bigger the round, the harder it fights back, Except the Cord's engineers didn't want to build a gun that punished its operator, they wanted one that worked with them. So they redesigned the muzzle brake, the most visible clue to the Cord's secret. Its large vented design channels, gases backward and sideways, counteracting the force of each shot. The result is less muzzle climb, less shoulder shock, and far less fatigue for the gunner. They didn't stop there. The barrel itself was crafted from high alloy steel that resisted heat distortion. On the battlefield, machine guns are often fired in long bursts, heating the barrel until it warps slightly, a major source of inaccuracy. The cord's barrel, however, holds its shape longer and cools faster. The recoil mechanism was rebalanced too, 
Internal buffers and springs absorb the energy gradually rather than in one violent kick. Together, these features meant the cord could fire controlled bursts of astonishing stability. For the first time, a .50 caliber didn't feel like a runaway train. It felt like it was on rails. The cord fires the 12.7 by 10 to the 8th millimeter cartridge, a massive armor-piercing round that dwarfs ordinary bullets. It's designed to destroy vehicles and disable aircraft at low altitude. Yet, despite its size, the cord fires these rounds with the precision of a rifle. Its rate of fire, roughly 650 to 750 rounds per minute, strikes a delicate balance. Too fast and control is lost. Too slow and suppression fails. The cord lands right in the sweet spot. Mounted on a tripod, it can deliver devastatingly accurate bursts at over two kilometers. Fired from a vehicle, it can engage convoys or fortifications with pinpoint control. This dual identity, both a suppressive weapon and a precision platform, made the cord unique. It wasn't just about overwhelming firepower anymore. It was about deciding where that firepower went. Also, if you're enjoying this breakdown, stay with me and drop a like. It gets even more impressive. Despite its raw power, the cord is surprisingly mobile. The infantry variant weighs around 25 kilograms, light enough for a two-person crew to carry and deploy quickly. That's roughly 10 kilograms lighter than comparable Western guns like the Browning M2. It's equipped with a quick change barrel, so overheating is never fatal in combat. Crews can swap barrels in under 20 seconds and resume firing immediately. The belt-fed system uses 50 round belts, and each component, from the feed cover to the trigger group, was simplified for reliability. What's remarkable is that the cord can even be fired from a bipod. That's practically unheard of for a .50 caliber. It speaks volumes about how well the weapon handles its own recoil. The design also favors modularity. The same gun can be mounted on a tank, fitted to a naval turret, or placed on a tripod for infantry. In every configuration, it feels like one continuous system, adaptable and precise. Reliability is what makes a good weapon legendary, and the cord was built with that in mind. Its moving parts were intentionally engineered with battlefield tolerance that means a little extra space, just enough to prevent jamming from dust or carbon buildup. It's the opposite philosophy of many Western designs, which rely on tight machining. The cord's looseness isn't a flaw, it's a feature. That's why it functions flawlessly in environments ranging from Arctic snow to desert heat. It can sit idle for months, then wake up firing on command. In testing, the cord endured thousands of rounds without a single catastrophic failure. Soldiers call it a gun that refuses to die. It delivers the same steady rhythm of fire. Calling a heavy machine gun rifle accurate sounds like an exaggeration, but in the cord's case, it's not far from the truth. In trials, it achieved groupings tighter than any previous Russian heavy machine gun. At 600 to 800 meters, the dispersion was closer to that of a designated marksman rifle than a typical HMG. That's unheard of for a weapon firing half-inch rounds. The reason lies in how all its systems work together. The balanced recoil, the rigid barrel, the smooth cycling of the bolt. Each small refinement compounds into a major leap in accuracy. In conflicts from Chechnya to Ukraine, cord operators have recorded precise hits on vehicles and personnel at distances that once required anti-material rifles. The cord proves something fundamental. You don't have to choose between a power and precision. If you design intelligently, you can have both. In the years since its introduction, the cord has become more than just a weapon. It's a reflection of modern Russian engineering, quietly brilliant. It serves across multiple branches of the Russian military, ground forces, naval units, and airborne divisions. In every setting, it plays the same role, to dominate distance with control. 
Its name has traveled beyond Russia, too. Variants and licensed copies appear in Belarus, Iran, and Syria. In every region it's used, one thing is consistent. Soldiers trust it. They know that when the cord opens fire, it will hit what it's aimed at. In a world shifting toward drones and precision munitions, the cord remains the soldier's precision tool, mechanical and timeless. Even after two decades, the cord's evolution hasn't stopped. Engineers continue refining its design with lighter alloys, improved optics, and digital sighting systems. Some modern variants can link to remote weapon stations, allowing crews to operate it safely from cover. It has also inspired new weapons like the ASVKM Cord Rifle, an anti-materiel sniper system that borrows the same 12.7 by 108 mm round and internal philosophy of control through balance. What started as a necessity, replacing the NSV, became a blueprint for future Russian firearms, rugged and engineered for both destruction and precision. The cord represents more than firepower. It's a statement about innovation born from a crisis. It took the chaos of the Soviet collapse and turned it into craftsmanship. It showed that even in the age of guided missiles, a well-designed machine gun can still dominate the battlefield. More importantly, it redefined an entire category. The cord proved that a heavy machine gun doesn't have to be a blunt instrument. It can be a scalpel, if built right. That's why, even decades later, it still matters. A weapon that tamed the .50 caliber's fury and made accuracy its legacy. The cord stands as proof that raw power can be disciplined through design. It's not the loudest gun, or the oldest, or the most famous yet. It's one of the few that truly changed what soldiers believed was possible. If you enjoyed exploring how this Russian masterpiece redefined precision, like, subscribe, and join us for the next breakdown where we uncover the hidden engineering behind the world's most extraordinary weapons.